today we're going to Buscot Park in Oxfordshire, which is an old country house and gardens. Um, so we're going to see what it's like. like a nice uh, tree-lined avenue. I'm in my noisy 20 odd year old uh, camper van today so you can probably hear the engine. Looks like there's people fishing on there. So after getting your ticket, it looks like we enter through uh, this a little bit. I'm not sure what this used to be. Maybe a walled garden or something. So one of the first areas you'll come to is this walled garden. And I think it's called the Four Seasons Walled Garden. And that's because in each corner there's a statue of one of the Four Seasons. There's one of them. Look how beautifully maintained this bit is. You can actually see some of the gardeners at work at the moment. Look at this view, walking towards the middle of the wall garden. Beyond the statue um, and the little pond in the middle. You can see waterworks going right up to the top of uh, the hill in the distance. That is amazing. This place is really well looked after. We've even got volunteers helping in the gardens. Not sure exactly what's going on with that statue. So there's like four quadrants to this walled garden. And as you move out from the centre you've got these uh, sort of avenue walkways. Still in the walled garden. Just going to have a look at the other few uh, statues of the Four Seasons. There's another one. And the third. And this is the fourth. So we'll now uh, be heading up there by the looks of it. So we're now leaving the walled garden. Terracotta Warriors. These are apparently uh, exact replicas of some of the ones um, in the great find that they uh, discovered in China. So anyway, you would go past the uh, Terracotta Warriors and just keep heading up the hill, up these steps and stuff. And at the top is this urn. And then the house comes into view.
not exactly sure what this urn uh, represents or the significance of it at the moment. So this ladies and gentlemen is Buscot Park in Oxfordshire and this was built between about 1780 and 1783 and it is pretty fine looking. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to go and have a little look in the house now. We'll see if there's any photography allowed inside. Some impressive uh, statuary just outside the house there. Just next to the steps. So that was the entrance hall. Apparently this is a Rembrandt. So there's Rubens in here as well, and Rembrandt. And a Van Dyck. So very opulent. No chandelier. I've noticed there's a lot of statuary around this place. Nice bronze here by the looks of it. This looks like a dining room. So there's a bit of a red theme in here. There's uh, some of the glass in the chandelier is actually red as well, and the red wallpaper. If you look out the room, there's a nice view of the uh, statue right at the end of the room down there. Interestingly, I read that this uh, dining room, uh, dining table, this was originally at um, Clumber Park in Nottinghamshire before that house got demolished. I think that was. 1938 that got demolished. So the chandelier is uh, strawberry glass from around 1860. And the clock on the mantelpiece is uh, French. And that's from the early 1800s. You can actually hear it working. Ooh. I believe this is the saloon. That chandelier's uh, Murano glass. Are these four large paintings on the wall. Two on this side of the room, and another two on the other side. They depict the legend of the Broyer Rose, apparently. And the chandelier, that was actually exhibited at the Great Exhibition of 1851. It's quite a few different colours and stuff at the top. All hung from uh, a very nice ceiling as well. 
There's one of the pictures. I like this fireplace. A lot of gilding in this room. It's really nicely done there. It's a gorgeous room this is. I think we might be going into the drawing room now. Yeah, so we're in the drawing room. And this chandelier is from around the 1830s. And that was by an English company called Perry and Co. And um, apparently it was originally in Devonshire House in Piccadilly. And then I think this is going to come to the staircase hall now. Yeah, so this is the staircase hall. Those ceiling paintings up there, they were taken from another demolished house called Badger Hall in um, Shropshire. So, let's go upstairs. So now we're upstairs and uh, these are clearly some of the family rooms. Nice bedstead there. View out to the front of the house there. Front there. Another bedroom, you can see it. It's a very impressive bed there. Absolutely gorgeous. And again, you can see outside onto some of the lawns. Back down the stairs. So this is the sitting room. And in here there are three paintings by Joshua Reynolds and there's a Gainsborough landscape. Here's one by Joshua Reynolds. Barbara Countess of Coventry. I think that's probably the Gainsborough landscape. Uh, and that's pretty much all the house uh, that we were allowed to look at. Thank you very much. Cheers, bye bye. Thanks. Nice view coming out of the house. If you look off to the left, over there, the nice big avenue. It's a great view right down there. Okay, so that was the house, and just outside the house. So uh, now we're going to go and have a look at the gardens, and especially the water gardens, because they're supposed to be uh, really, really good. So yeah, let's go. Look at this view. Hmm. What an avenue. That's great. Hmm. 
Another nice vista comes into view. Just about to see uh, what appears to be an obelisk right in the distance. Yeah, this place is really, really well kept. No expense spared, I don't think. This piece of artwork here is called Vessel, apparently. And it looks like lots of bits of slate put together to uh, form the shape of a big jar or vessel. Mm. Interesting. We're now coming up to a little area which is called the Citrus Bowl. Uh, so you can see it's like a little sunken area, like a little sunken bowl. And apparently there's, uh, I don't know, here we can see, surrounded by citrus trees that are in pots. I think they'll put them in pots so that um, in the winter I can move them to a warmer uh, climate like in one of the orangeries or something like that. So here we are. Some lemons. Ooh. Orangeries or oranges or something like that. And then there's this sort of pyramid structure over an Italian wellhead. Hmm, and it is. I didn't think it'd actually be a proper well, but it is. There's actually water in there. And as you can see, there's a really old bucket. And actually the ropes and stuff. I mean, I ain't saying they still use it. But it does actually look to maybe be function. Look, they've even got a rocking chair on this little bit. So yeah, that's the citrus bowl. When you come out the citrus bowl, you can see uh, a bit further up that vista that we looked at before now, with the obelisk at the top. And then there's two sort of Egyptian uh, figures, sculptures here. Let's look at the avenues in this place, they're great. Even just round this corner. Look. All the views opened up as they should be. See, another avenue with an urn at the top or something up there. Just noticed something interesting on this uh, Egyptian figure down here. Here we go. Coden Seely Lambert, 1800. It's a code stone from the Lambert works, 1800. Now leaving the citrus bowl, let's go through this uh, little passage. And then we come on to what's known as the Swinging Garden. As you can see, you can have a nice swing. There we go, various swinging seats. Mm. 
and sculpture down the middle which actually moves as well which is good okay now we're really talking now this is called the uh, Pito or Pato Water Garden this was designed by a renowned uh, garden designer called Harold, Harold Peter. Just look at that view. Yeah, so this water garden it was originally laid out in 1904 and then extended between 1911 and 1913. And what it does, if you look, creates a link from pretty much you can see the side of the house up there. And then it just sweeps straight down. And you have the water garden. And then the lake. And then there's even like a temple at the end of the lake. So you've just got one massive vista right down there. Now as you can see with this water garden, and we'll go down a bit further, you've sort of got the ponds, there's a bridge, there's a little canal bit, so it's all interesting. So let's have a little walk down the Pito water garden. statues and stuff as well, all dotted along. There's a record for the amount of uh, statuary in a country house. I think this place said uh, they're giving others a good run for the money. Here's another one. Let's carry on down. Nice weather today by the way, apart from uh, it's a bit of a breeze but it's actually quite nice. I don't like it too hot anyway. So you got these little sort of uh, cascading bits. And the water runs under this bridge. I'm just gonna pop over the other side of this bridge. Got this little seat over here, and there's one on the other side as well. I think that's marble, you know, Italian marble. And yeah, there's there's one on the opposite side, just a mirror. It. I've just popped back to the top because I forgot to mention the. Uh, the figure on the fountain, it's actually supposed to be a dolphin and, um, and a young child, apparently. As you can see, I'll try and zoom in a little bit. You can see the dolphin's head and, the, uh, and it's holding the child. Here we go then, we're back down uh, to the little bridge. Just up to the right there is another little avenue with an urn at the top. To the left. Another sculpture or statue. So many statues. This is the uh, bottom end of the 
water garden and this is a canal so a structure a little bit of it you can probably see now that um, at the bottom end of the water garden it leads on to the uh, the big lake so we'll just go and have a look at that now Look, you can actually see the uh, the lilies in the planters down there. I don't know if you can see in the water. You can see actually see them in the planters. So they're in the planters. They're all right down the middle, aren't they? So more statues on either side. And then that leads straight on to the lake. And there's some kind of temple or something at the bottom. And then to the left of that, there's a little stone bridge that comes into the. It's a large lake, this is. No messing around. Very, very large. So yeah, this is where the lake meets the water garden. So do not attempt to cross when we're in the water garden. Look at the view up the water garden straight at the top. What a gorgeous piece of work. Absolutely beautiful. It's relatively busy here. It's uh, Friday afternoon. It's nice weather there. And it's a National Trust place actually, so... That's probably why. Yeah, so this is looking back up the water garden there. Okay, so through another passage, we're coming away from the water garden now. Okay, so at the end of that passage, or avenue, this is called the Marble Vase. It says N-E-E-G, not sure what that's uh, all about. But that is the marble vase, apparently. I did read that there was a marble vase somewhere with the ashes of the second Lord Farringdon, so that could be the one with the uh, second Lord Farringdon's ashes in. And then uh, leading off from that area, we go through uh, another really nice shaded avenue of trees and we're coming up to something that's known as the Holly Circle. You can see a large obelisk in the middle and that's the one you could see from the vista earlier on. Now around the outside of this um, sort of circular shaped area Five pairs of obelisks going around the outside. Then you got the large one in the middle. And they're actually um, they employed a company to put these hieroglyphics on it. Very 
interesting. I really like this place. And then uh, why not get some more statuary? Just have a, a little formal entrance into that side of the park and some gates and stuff. Very nice. And then uh, what appears to be some kind of modern art down from that view. You see these um, figures at quite a few country houses. Hare would have got a few at the rear of the house and there's some at Croom as well and I think the ones at Croom were the ones that got defaced recently by uh, kids drawing on them with crayons and whatever. What's also interesting about this area <coughs> is look how the uh, obelisk doubles up as a sundial. I really like this place. And then coming up, you can see the reverse view back up to the house, straight through that avenue. Now, moving away from that area, <coughs> there's another sort of passage being cut out of the grass just to lead your eye up to this big tree down the centre here. I'm not a tree expert but um, maybe a redwood or something like that. I think it's the tallest tree around here. I could be wrong. And then they've even decided to uh, put another, another statue underneath it. Because uh, why not just add another statue? Yeah, so under the tree, there's this bust. Don't know who it is. Just uh, some male. But yeah, the, the bottom of this tree is really large. So correct me if I'm wrong if it's not a redwood. I'm really not sure. Just up here. I think you can probably see it. <coughs> sort of a triangle on top of that mound of uh, grass there and that's actually a whalebone or it's made to look like one um, and there was a fashion with uh, country houses and places you know back in the 19th and 18th centuries of getting these whalebones and just installing them on their um, parks or gardens or whatever and apparently there's supposed to be a road book on top of there as well but you're not going to be able to uh, see there because it's, it's underneath the whalebone and there's grass in the way but yeah that is apparently a whalebone up there I've zoomed in a little bit you might be able to see it that's the rear of it now but there's actually uh, you can see like pieces of steel or something holding it together because they get uh, very brittle after a while and uh, a lot of the places that had them installed they just um, they just lose them over the years because they decay and whatever I remember there was um, there was one at Alton Towers and you can see, still just see um, two little stumps either side of a path but the main, the main bit of the bone's gone it's just the bits that went into the floor that's all that remains now so I've probably done well just to keep it here and then coming back down from where the wild bone is look at this uh, this avenue of trees leading straight up to the house at the end that's a great sight then like how it dips, this drive, dips right down and then straight back up and then you met with the house at the top. I 
And then we're back to uh, near the house. Nice. There's these pavilion uh, type things at each side of the house. I think this one was actually turned into a small cinema for uh, one of the Lord. Again, some more statuary. Look at this. Outdoor swimming pool. Right at the side of the house. Check it out. Amazing. Complete with diving board. As you would. And well maintained, as you can see. Very own uh, branded safety uh, gear. And on the archway that leads to the swimming pool, there's some paintings. And they actually feature some of the stuff and, um, you know, family and stuff like that. Sitting down to eat a meal. Bit of golf. Bit of tennis going on there. And if we look down, you can actually see the water garden there. Yeah, very interesting place. Very, very interesting. And then from around the back of that pavilion, and go around to the uh, rear of the house. Looking good. Let's have a look at this fountain. Very nice. You see the parkland behind it. Really nice. The ducks look like they're enjoying the sounds. Almost missed this. That was uh, like a little frog. Sunday doing all relaxing. Trying so not to get my shadow. Mm -hmm. See that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? So yeah, this has been uh, Buscot Park in Oxfordshire. I've got to say, I'm really impressed with this place. And I actually like the mix of um, some of the more modern work that's been done, and obviously some of the older work from the 18th century and 19th century. So yeah, um, thank you for watching again. I appreciate it. And yeah, like I say, I would recommend a visit. Really, really good. And I've been lucky with the weather today, to be fair. So yeah, Buscot Park, really, really nice. Definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. Cheers.